how do we sort of see the prop tech space in, in, in emerging markets, right? Um, I think it's one of those unexplored spaces, but prop tech as an asset category or property as an asset category is one of the most, uh, it's, it's where most savings effectively go for yep. um, player, for, for anyone in our market, to be honest. Yep. Yep. And if you think about it contextually, so in Dubai, for example, you can have a transaction close within 24 hours. In the UK, it takes a little bit longer. Um, in, in, in most developed markets, it takes close to a week or so in terms of the registration process and all these sort of things. But yeah. in Pakistan and Bangladesh, it takes at least 20 to 30 days in order to close mm -hmm. the transaction, right? Mm -hmm. And that's largely a mechanism of uh, coordination between multiple stakeholders, be it the land registry department, be it effectively the local source. Uh, development authority, be it effectively, you know, uh, just the banking required in order to facilitate the process. Sure. Now, let me sort of qualify all of that with also highlighting that this is a sector which is highly undocumented, right? Yep. So it's got a huge ton of analog data, but it also is a place where most people are not willing to effectively document their transactions. This yep. is largely a function of either um, a an inability for people to trust effectively their local government or yeah. or effectively a um, an ability for people to do more nefarious things but uh beyond that i think it's also largely down to uh the headache of uh, just just most participants uh, not being able to dictate how they'd like to do the transaction because i think it's more of this is a cultural norm and we need to do a transaction in a certain way and that the seller is unwilling to sort of accept any other way which actually documents the transaction. So it's mm -hmm. almost like a part of the document transaction, right? In sure. the sense that you've got like a nominal value, but then the real value is much higher, right? Mm -hmm. So so I think that, I, I, think, I think in my view at least, it, it largely comes down to how structuring out a, a better uh, governance system and, and a better land registry system in order to effectively document the transaction in a much more effective way. So that once that transaction is pretty much set to be documented, then you can sort of play around with how you need to fix the friction in between. No, no, I understand what you're saying. But if, if those saying. nodes are completely like... Yeah, so... so uh... It's the prop tech sector actually in, in emerging markets is actually a fascinating one because um, apart from EMPG, if, if I was to ask you uh, which really big prop tech firm do you know in any emerging market, you probably wouldn't be able to say it off the top of your head, right? They just not they haven't been the standouts. Um, they haven't been the standout players. And we we actually uh, for a period were invested in. I mean, we still are actually. Uh, in the in the, in the leading kind of um, uh, uh, vertical marketplace for uh, for real estate in Iran, and 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 I'm sure listeners are aware of kind of what typically is going on. In in phase one, you have the classifieds which aggregate distribution and charge a rent on that distribution. Right, it's quite a simple business model. Um, and then they realize uh, their biggest verticals are auto, real estate, and jobs. Um, and then they say, hang on a second, I don't want to just charge a rent. I want to be part of the transaction. And so they all try to move into vertical marketplaces. Um, my experience is that actually, I think what is going on is that the friction is not as high as you think. Mm -hmm. Objectively, when you look at it, you're like, Jesus, this, this, is, this is a nightmare. I've got to run back and forth to different places. I've got to stamp a hundred different things. I've got to try and speak to this person to convince them to do this today as opposed to tomorrow. My as inefficient as that seems, I think it's not a huge pain point. And I tell you why, because it, it's just too, too damn difficult to build the distribution in the area that you need to beyond classifieds. Classifieds do enough already, it seems to me. Um, and I've seen, there are a few companies that have tried to move on the transaction side themselves. They say, okay, we, we buy and sell property. Why? Because we have more data on both sides. I actually think probably the interesting line of attack is um, just just do sales, right? If there's new developments, if there's new property, well, be the be the most efficient online sales arm. 
that way you're going directly to the transaction and you're monetizing the developer side because you're solving a pain point for them. It's not, it's not an obvious issue. But the point is, what is the most efficient line of attack? Right? You yeah. will make money in that model from day one. It's not the gl most glamorous one. You don't have a 50-person tech team. But you will build probably $5, $10 million revenue business out of it mm -hmm. and build some sort of network out of it, even if it's an offline network. That, that's the way it's... The, the problem, I think, even with um, a lot of uh, uh, maybe founders, in it, is they, they, there are too many articles and online um, content on how all this stuff works in the US and Europe, which largely is very relevant in, in, in our markets. For the single fact that the, the competition dynamic is different, right? Yep. And that completely changes the nature of any sort of game theory, if you kind of uh, like uh, John Nash. Because yep. if I have 10 competitors that are all well-funded, i.e. if I'm operating in the US, all of them will have different fundraising, all are executing a different... My game is not a rational company-building game i'm not there to i'm not there saying i'm building a 30-year profitable enterprise i'm mm -hmm. paying i'm playing a game i have to fucking outplay outplay my competitors but if yeah. you if 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 you had a million two million arr the category leader probably already because the country is so early in its digitalization path right and you, you then go and raise a free five million round that, that gives you a balance sheet it may not seem absolutely large but it's still relative to your competition you just dunk them at that point just be very deliberate. You don't have to do anything what, what, what you read about in Silicon Valley. Just do what seems right relative to the reality of the opportunities set in hand. Yep. That's it. That's just simply it. Yeah.